This video explains how to get the first and last days of a certain month using the Python programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the Python code. As a first step for this tutorial, we need to import certain libraries and modules to Python. And we can do that as you can see in the first code box. So in these lines of code, I'm importing the calendar module. Then I'm importing date time from date time and I'm importing relative delta from date util. So after running these lines of code, all the necessary libraries and modules are imported. And then in the next step, we can use the month range function of the calendar module to return the first and last days of a certain month. So in this case, I want to return the first and last days of the month November in the year 2022. And I'm storing the output of this in the two data objects, first day and day count. And then I'm using the print function to print these two days below the code books. So after running these lines of code, the values one and 30 are returned. So obviously the value one is the first day in the month, November, 2022. However, based on this output, we can see that the month November has 30 days. We can also use these data objects that we have just created to return the corresponding names of these days. And we can do that by using day name of the calendar module. And after day name, we have to use square brackets and we have to insert the name of the data object that we have created before. So in this case, we want to return the name of the day that corresponds to the 1st of November 2022. So after running this line of code, you can see that the string Tuesday is returned, which tells us that the 1st of November 2022 was a Tuesday. We can also use day name to return the name of the last day of a month. So in this case, I'm using day name in combination with our data object first day plus our data object day count. And after running this line of code, the day Wednesday is returned, which tells us that the last day of the month November in the year 2022 was a Wednesday. We can also find the first and last days of a month that corresponds to a certain date time object. And for this, we first need to create an example date time object, as you can see in this line of code. So in this case, I'm creating a date time object that contains the 14th of February 2022. And I'm storing this date time object in the data object sample date. And then in the next step, I'm using relative delta to create a date object that contains the first day. And then once again, I'm using relative delta to create another data object that contains the last day corresponding to our sample date. Note that within relative delta, I'm specifying the value 31. So even though if some months have less than 31 days, this returns the last day of this specific month. You can see that by printing the output of our two new data objects below the seventh code box. So after running this line of code, you can see that the 1st of February 2022 and the 28th of February 2022 is returned. So these two days are the first and the last days of this month. Now we can also use the minus symbol for this task, as you can see in the next code box. So you might have noticed that in the previous example, I have used the plus operator to return the first and last days of our daytime object. However, it's also possible to use the minus operator, as you can see in these lines of code. And after running these lines of code, exactly the same output is returned. So whether you want to use the plus or the minus operator is a matter of taste. It's also possible to return the names of these dates that I have just returned. And we can do that by using the ctime function, as you can see in the next line of code. So in this case, I'm applying the ctime function to our first and last days data objects. And then you can see below this line of code that we have returned Tuesday and Monday. So the 
1st February 2022 was a Tuesday and the 28th February 2022 was a Monday. Alternatively to that, we can also use the strift time function to print the first day or the name of the first day below the code box. And we can do that as you can see in this line of code. And if we want to return the last day or the name of the last day below the code box, once again, we can use the strift time function as you can see in this line of code. So after running these lines of code, the two outputs that you can see below the code box are returned. And as you can see, the strift time function also returned Tuesday corresponding to the 1st of February and Monday corresponding to the last day of February. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.